In this video, we're going to talk about grouped frequency distribution tables. So again, in the last one we did simple frequency distribution tables. This one we're going to do grouped. We're going to group the, um, the, the scores together in little clumps or little intervals or little groups. Um, so it's easier to figure out the frequencies for them. It's cleaner. It's easier to look at. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is figure out, well, how big are our groups going to be? So over here, again, we have our raw scores, and so each one of these scores in blue represent one score. So this might be Michael's score of 97 and Jacob's score of 93. Each person here, Sally has 84, right? Each person has their own individual raw score or their X, right? Their, their raw score. Now, frequency is just... Um, how many, like your tally count, if you will, right? So how many do you see um, with that one specific score? Okay, with grouped, we're going to um, group them in little piles. And so the way I was taught was you take the highest score, and in this case, it's 97, right? And you minus the lowest score, and in this case, it is 62, and that gives you a difference of 35. You divide that by 10, and then round up to the nearest number. So it gets 3.5, so we're going to call it 4. So we're going to do it in groups of 4. Now the first one you want to do, make it look clean, but capture the lowest number. So again, our lowest number was 62. So the cleanest number there, or the easiest number, would be like 60. Right? It's lowest, that, or it's low enough that it can capture 62, but it's not like a weird number that we start with, like 61 or 62. So we'll start with 60, and we go groups of 4. Okay. So four for us would be um, so 60, 61, 62, and 63. Now again, remember, keep in mind real limits, right? So um, even though this kind of looks like, oh, it just looks like there's three there, 60 to 63, there's actually four numbers that are represented because you could have a score of 60 on this quiz, okay? So then you have to ask yourself, okay, how many people scored between 60 and 63? And again, um, check off or cross out if you see one that qualifies for this. This 63 qualifies, 63, and I see a 62 over here, um, and that's it. That's all I see. So we're going to say two people had a score between 60 and 63. So our next interval would be 64 to 67. Now again, this looks like 3, because 67 minus 64 is 3, but it's actually four numbers that could be there, because you can have... 64, right? And do we have to have a score of 64? I don't think so, but we could. Um, 65, 66, and 67. And I don't see any numbers that have that, but maybe our next one would be better. So let's go 68 to um, 71. I think we have a number of those. So you go through and you say, okay, do I see any numbers here? Okay, here's a 68. Do I have any 69s? No. Do I have any 70s? Uh, no, do I have any um, 71s? Um, let's see here. I don't think so, but let me just kind of keep looking. Okay, but I do see another 68, so we'll go with that. So we have two people that scored either a 68, 69, 70, or 71. Okay, and then my next one is 72. 75. So I have one, uh, two, three, three, okay. And then 76 to 79. And I have, let's see here, 76. Well, oh, that's one. Two, three, four, five. That's a lot, okay. And then we'll go 80 to 83. And again, my interval is four. Yeah, so I could have 80, 81, 82, or 83. So I have, let's see here, I have one, two, three. Okay, 84 to 87, I have 1, uh, 2, ok, 
Okay, and then 88 to 91. I have one, two. Okay, 92 to 95. I have, oh, I have quite a bit. Okay, so one, two, three, four. My last one, 96 to 99. I have one, two, three, four again. Okay, so I have crossed off all my raw scores and I have created a frequency distribution table based off an interval of four because I took my highest number, 97, minus 62, gave me 35, divided by 10, so it's 3.5 and I ran up to four. So um, I have, let's see here, 27 people in my study. And how do I know I have 27 people in my study? Well, a couple of different ways. I can add up each one of these different scores, and that's going to give me um, 27. Or I can add up 2 plus 0 plus 2 is 4 um, plus 3 is 7, and then uh, 3 is 10, 15, 17, 19, <clears throat> 23, 27. So quick check, just double check that, that your Fs, that your frequency um, matches up to your number of raw scores. That's how you build a grouped frequency distribution table. In the second part of the video, we're going to graphically display the raw data that we tabulated in the grouped frequency data in the our table in the last um, one. So what I have down here on the x-axis is um, the raw score. So again, like you uh, remember, we had uh, the first group that was like 60 to 63. And we had two people that scored that. So running across this axis is the raw scores, the group scores. Running along the y-axis is your frequency, how many people had that raw score. Okay, so again, for our first one, we had 60 to 63. We had two people that scored that, so right here, right? Now, this is continuous data, right? Because in theory, somebody could have had a 60.5 or a 63.43, right? So with a continuous data, uh, we do a histogram where it looks like a bar chart, but all the lines are smooshed together, and that kind of implies it's continuous data. We didn't have anybody that had 64 to 67, so we're going to leave that at zero. And then the next one we had was 68 to 71, this one right here, and we had um, two people that had that also, so we would have it like, like this, right? And then we had three people that scored um, 72 to 75, so it would kind of go up like that. And we had um, from 76 to 79, we had five people all the way up there that scored that amount or that range. And 80 to 83, we had three people, so we bring it back down to this section right here. And then 84 to 87, we had two people, so about like that. See how all these lines are touching? That implies, again, continuous variables. You know, in opposition to discrete variables. Okay, the 88 to 91, we had um, two people again. And then 92 to 95, we had four people, so woo, way up here. And then 96 to 99, we had um, four people again. So with this one, uh, we can kind of see that it's shaded in here. Nothing so much for 64 to 67, but then all of this would be shaded in because right, it's continuous data. So we call this type of chart a histogram. It looks a lot like a bar chart, but you notice there's no, um, no space in between the columns at all. They're all the same. So it, again, implies this continuous variables of quiz scores that we're using. So um, because, again, you could have a quiz score of like 90.5 or 97.37, right, this continuous um, variable.